and now for today's Bible question. Today we've been learning about the signs of the Lord's return to judge the world. We learned that Jerusalem was judged in AD 70 when God allowed the Roman armies to destroy Jerusalem and the temple and scatter Israel over the face of the earth. We also learned that the time of Jesus' second coming may be very near because the generation that witnessed the formation of the nation of Israel is coming to its close very soon. Someone might ask the question, why is Israel so important to God and to prophecy? It is striking to notice how much of our Bible is centered around the history and prophecies concerning the nation of Israel. Why would this little country in the Middle East create so much biblical attention and be the center of world conflict and of future glory? Starting way back in Genesis 12, we meet a man named Abraham, who was called by God to go to the land of promise, Canaan, and what today we know is Israel. God in his sovereignty chose Abraham and his descendants as a people whom God would bless. He did this not to show favoritism to this particular people, but that through them all the nations of the earth would be blessed. As God's chosen people, they were given the law of God through Moses. They were brought miraculously out of slavery and into the land of blessing. And they were given the priesthood, the tabernacle, and the promise of God's presence among them in Jerusalem. All of this was to be a means by which all nations could know the true God and Creator of all. The nations worshipped other gods, but could and should have learned by God's dealings with Israel whom the true God was. Pharaoh should have known after all the signs given through Moses who the true God was. Even his magicians had to admit that these plagues were nothing else but the finger of God. God's plan was to use Israel as an object lesson of his love and redemption available to all people. Unfortunately, Israel failed to keep God's law and represent him to the nations. But God's plan was not overcome because of the sinful rebellion of Israel. God had prepared for the failure of the nation. He sent his son who came through the nation of Israel and called Israel to repentance. Even when Israel refused to receive her Messiah and honor him as their rightful king, God's purposes still would not be confounded. The message of salvation went forth from the Jewish apostles to the Gentiles and has since spread across the globe so that all nations of the earth have been blessed through the descendants of Abraham. Jesus was the son of Abraham and the one through whom God would fulfill all his promises. It appears that Israel was lost and far from God over the past 2,000 years. But God has not finished with the nation of Israel, for as yet he intends to fulfill all of his promises to these people. Therefore they have been preserved miraculously over 2,500 years since their dispersion by Nebuchadnezzar to all the nations. It is more than remarkable that the Jewish people have remained a unique people with a unique language after so many generations have passed, not even having their own country in which to live. Although they have had short time of restoration to the land, they have never had their own sovereign state until 1948. Today in Israel the Jews gather at the Wailing Wall and say their prayers, still waiting and hoping for God's Messiah to come and exalt their nation. They still feel the oppressive hand of their enemies trying to destroy them, but cry out to God for his mercy on their nation. The Christian stands in the light of God's revelation and understands that until this nation recognizes that Jesus is their Messiah, they will not find peace with God or safety from their enemies. But soon, and very soon, the days of judgment will commence and the attention of the world will focus on this tiny nation. And when it looks as though Israel is about to be utterly destroyed, then their great Savior will appear in glory and spare them, exalt them, and he
he shall reign from Jerusalem for one thousand years. The Christian should learn the significance of Israel from the Old Testament and New Testament prophecies and understand that this nation is the apple of God's eye and he will ensure that they will be rescued and exalted. The church is not a replacement of Israel in God's plans but rather God's special called out people during the time of Israel's blindness and unbelief. We do well to remember the promise made to Abraham that those who bless Israel will be blessed. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis chapter 12 verse 3.